Camping in the woods was the thing I always wanted, but I never expected it to turn into a nightmare. I was driving alone on a dirt road, looking for a spot to pitch my tent, when I saw a sign that said, Cabin for Rent. I thought it would be nice to spend a night in a cozy cabin instead of sleeping on the ground, so I followed the arrow to a clearing where a wooden cabin stood. The cabin looked old and abandoned, but I didn't mind. I parked my car and got out, carrying my backpack. I knocked on the door, but there was no answer. I tried the handle, and it opened easily. I stepped inside, and was greeted by a musty smell and a layer of dust. The cabin had a fireplace, a couch, a table, and a kitchenette. There was also a door that led to a bedroom and a bathroom. I decided to make myself comfortable, and lit a fire in the fireplace. I put my backpack on the couch, and went to the kitchenette to look for some food. I found some canned beans and crackers in a cupboard, and a bottle of water in the fridge. I heated up the beans on the stove, and ate them with the crackers. I drank some water, and felt a bit sleepy. I decided to take a nap on the couch, and wrap myself in a blanket. I don't know how long I slept, but I woke up to a loud noise. It sounded like someone was banging on the door. I got up, and looked through the window. It was dark outside, and I couldn't see anything. I grabbed a flashlight and opened the door. There was no one there. I stepped outside and shone the flashlight around. I saw nothing but trees and shadows. I was about to go back inside when I heard a scream. It was a woman's scream, and it came from the woods. I felt a surge of fear and wondered what was going on. I thought maybe someone was in trouble and needed help. I grabbed a knife from the kitchen and ran towards the scream. I followed the sound and soon reached a clearing. There, I saw a horrifying sight. There was a woman lying on the ground covered in blood. She had been stabbed multiple times and her eyes were wide open. Next to her, there was a man holding a bloody knife. He was wearing a mask and a hooded cloak. He looked at me and smiled wickedly. He said, Hello, stranger. Welcome to my cabin. I hope you enjoyed your stay. I'm sorry to interrupt your nap, but I have a little game for you. You see, I like to hunt people in the woods and make them my trophies. You are my latest prey. If you can make it back to the cabin alive, you win. If not, well, you know what happens. Ready? Go! He threw the knife at me and missed. I dodged and ran back to the cabin. He chased me, laughing maniacally. I reached the cabin and slammed the door behind me. I locked it and looked for a way out. I saw a window and broke it with a chair. I climbed out and ran to my car. He followed me and tried to grab me. I kicked him in the face and got in the car. I started the engine and drove away. He threw another knife at me and hit the tire. I lost control and crashed into a tree. I was unconscious for a while, but I woke up to the sound of sirens. I saw flashing lights and police cars. I saw paramedics and firefighters. I saw the man, handcuffed and taken away. I saw the woman, covered with a sheet and put on a stretcher. I saw a police officer, who came to me and said, You're lucky to be a live kid. We've been looking for this guy for months. He's a serial killer, who lures people to his cabin and kills them. He calls himself the cabin killer. You're the first one who ever escaped him. How did you do it? I didn't know what to say. I was in shock and in pain. I had cuts and bruises all over my body. I had a broken arm and a concussion. I had a nightmare and a trauma. I had a story and a scar. I had survived, but I had not won. I always thought of spending a night at the old cabin in the woods. It was a family heirloom, passed down from my grandfather to my father and then to me. I had heard stories about how cozy and peaceful it was, 
surrounded by nature and away from the city noise. I thought it would be a perfect getaway for me and my girlfriend, who loved camping and hiking. We packed our bags and drove to the cabin on a Friday evening. It was a long and bumpy ride, but we didn't mind. We were excited to see the place and enjoy some quality time together. We arrived at the cabin just before sunset. It looked exactly like the pictures I had seen, a wooden structure with a porch, a chimney, and a few windows. It was nestled among the trees, with a small clearing in front of it. We unloaded our stuff and entered the cabin. It was dark and dusty inside, but we didn't care. We lit some candles and a fire in the fireplace, and made ourselves comfortable on the couch. We cuddled and kissed, and talked about our plans for the next day. We decided to go for a hike in the morning, and then explore the nearby lake in the afternoon. We were happy and relaxed, and soon fell asleep in each other's arms. I woke up in the middle of the night, feeling a cold breeze on my face. I opened my eyes and saw that the fire had died down, and the candles had burned out. The cabin was pitch black, except for a faint moonlight coming through the window. I looked at my girlfriend, who was still sleeping soundly next to me. I got up and put on my jacket and walked to the window. I wanted to see the stars in the forest and maybe relight the fire. I peered outside and felt a chill run down my spine. There was something wrong with the scene. The trees looked twisted and menacing, and the clearing was covered with a thick fog. I couldn't see the stars or the moon, only a dark and gloomy sky. And then I saw it, a figure standing in the fog, staring at me. It was tall and thin, with long arms and legs, and a pale and featureless face. It had no eyes, no nose, no mouth, just a blank expression. It was wearing a black cloak that covered its body, and a hood that hid its hair. It was the most terrifying thing I had ever seen. I gasped and stepped back, bumping into the couch. I woke up my girlfriend, who was startled by my sudden movement. She asked me what was wrong, and I pointed to the window. She looked outside and screamed. She saw the figure too, and it was closer than before. It had moved from the edge of the clearing to the porch, and was now standing right in front of the door. It was holding something in its hand, something shiny and sharp. A knife. We panicked and ran to the other side of the cabin, looking for a way out. There was only one other door, leading to the back of the cabin. We opened it and ran outside, hoping to find our car and escape. But we were too late. The figure was faster than us, and had already circled around the cabin. It blocked our path, and raised its knife. We had nowhere to go, and no one to help us. We were trapped. We screamed and begged for mercy, but the figure didn't respond. It didn't make a sound, or show any emotion. It just moved towards us, slowly and steadily, like a predator hunting its prey. It reached us, and stabbed us, one by one, in the chest. We felt a sharp pain, and then nothing. We fell to the ground, bleeding and dying. The last thing we saw was its face, still blank and emotionless, as it looked down at us. The next morning, a ranger found our bodies in the clearing. He called the police, and they came to investigate. They searched the cabin, and found nothing. No signs of a struggle, no fingerprints, no clues. They couldn't explain what had happened, or who had done it. They ruled it as a random and brutal murder, and closed the case. But they were wrong. It wasn't random, or brutal. It was planned, and personal. The figure was not a stranger, or a monster. It was a relative, and a human. It was my cousin, who had always hated me. He had always envied me, for inheriting the cabin, and for having a girlfriend. He had always wanted to kill me, and take everything I had. He had followed us to the cabin, and waited for the right moment. He had dressed up as a ghost, and used the fog and the darkness to scare us. He had killed us, and then left, 
without a trace. He had gotten away with it, and he was happy. He was the only one who knew the truth, and he never told anyone. He kept it as his dark and twisted secret until the day he died. He died alone, in his apartment, of a heart attack. He had no friends, no family, no love. He had nothing except for his memories. Memories of the night he killed us at the old cabin in the woods. I wanted some peace and quiet away from the city and the stress so I rented a cabin alone in woods. The cabin looked cozy and rustic, with a fireplace and a porch. I unpacked my bags and settled in. The first night was uneventful. I made some dinner, read a book, and went to bed early. I slept well, enjoying the silence and the fresh air. The next morning, I decided to explore the surroundings. I put on my boots and jacket, and grabbed a map from the cabin. I followed a trail that led to a lake. The scenery was beautiful, and I felt relaxed and happy. I spent a few hours by the lake, taking pictures and skipping stones. I noticed some footprints on the shore, but I didn't think much of it. Maybe they were from another hiker or a wild animal. I decided to head back to the cabin before it got dark. I retraced my steps, following the trail and the map. But something was wrong. The trail seemed different, and the map didn't match the landmarks. I felt a surge of panic. Had I taken a wrong turn? Was I lost? I checked my phone, but there was no signal. I tried to calm myself down and looked for familiar signs. I saw a clearing up ahead and hoped it was the one near the cabin. It wasn't. It was a different clearing, with a small wooden shack in the middle. The shack looked old and abandoned, with broken windows and a rusty door. I felt a chill run down my spine. Who lived there? What was it doing in the middle of the woods? I had a bad feeling about it, and wanted to get away as fast as possible. But before I could turn around, I heard a loud bang. The door of the shack swung open, and a man stepped out. He was tall and muscular, with a long beard and a dirty coat. He had a shotgun in his hands, and a crazed look in his eyes. He saw me, and smiled wickedly. Hello there, stranger, he said in a raspy voice. You look lost. Why don't you come inside? I have something for you. He raised his shotgun, and aimed it at me. I froze in terror, unable to move or scream. He pulled the trigger, and I heard a deafening blast. The last thing I saw was his twisted grin as he walked towards me. I was lost in the forest. I had been hiking with my friends, but we got separated when a storm hit. The rain was pouring down, the wind was howling, and the thunder was deafening. I tried to find my way back to the trail, but everything looked the same. I was cold, wet, and hungry. I had no idea where I was or how to get out. As night fell, I started to panic. I knew I couldn't survive in the dark, with wild animals and other dangers lurking around. I needed to find shelter fast. I stumbled through the woods, hoping to see a sign of civilization. Then I saw it. A faint light in the distance. I ran towards it hoping it was a house or a campsite. But as I got closer, I realized it was a cabin. A small, wooden cabin, with a single window and a chimney. It looked old and abandoned, but it was better than nothing. I knocked on the door, but there was no answer. I tried the handle, and it opened. I stepped inside, and closed the door behind me. The cabin was dark and dusty. There was a fireplace, a table, a chair, and a bed. There was also a shelf with some books and a candle. I lit the candle and looked around. The cabin seemed harmless, but I felt uneasy. There was something off about it. Something creepy. I decided to stay near the fireplace and keep the fire going. I hoped that someone would find me in the morning 
or that I would find my way back to my friends. I sat on the floor and wrapped myself in a blanket. I tried to calm myself down and think positive thoughts, but I couldn't shake the feeling that I was not alone, that someone or something was watching me. I heard noises outside, footsteps, branches snapping, growls. I hoped they were just animals and not something worse. I heard noises inside. Creaks, whispers, moans. I hoped they were just the wind and not something else. I was terrified. I wished I had never entered the cabin. I couldn't sleep. I kept the fire burning and the candle lit. I watched the shadows on the walls and the flickering of the light. I saw shapes and figures and faces and eyes. I imagined horrors and nightmares and monsters and ghosts. I was losing my mind. I wanted to get out of the cabin, but I was too afraid to open the door. I was trapped. Then I heard a loud bang. The door slammed open, and a gust of wind blew out the candle. The cabin was plunged into darkness. I screamed and jumped to my feet. I grabbed the blanket and ran towards the door. I didn't care what was outside, I just wanted to escape. But as I reached the door, I felt a hand grab my ankle. I tripped and fell to the ground. I felt another hand grab my arm, and another hand grab my neck. I felt nails digging into my skin, and teeth biting into my flesh. I felt pain and blood and fear. I felt death. I was not alone in the cabin. I never was. I went to my friend's cabin for a weekend getaway. He had invited me and a few other friends to enjoy the nature and relax. The cabin was in the middle of the woods, far away from any civilization. It was cozy and rustic, with a fireplace, a kitchen, and two bedrooms. The first night, we had a barbecue and played some games. We had a lot of fun and laughed a lot. We decided to go to bed early since we wanted to go hiking the next day. I shared a room with my friend, while the others slept in the other room. I fell asleep quickly, but I woke up in the middle of the night. I heard a strange noise outside. It sounded like someone or something was scratching the door. I got up and looked out the window. I saw a dark figure standing on the porch. It was wearing a hooded cloak and holding a large knife. It was staring right at me. I felt a surge of fear and panic. I grabbed my phone and tried to call for help, but there was no signal. I woke up my friend and told him what I saw. He got up and looked out the window too. He gasped and said, That's the killer! I was confused and terrified. What killer? I asked. He said, Don't you remember? There was a news report about a serial killer who escaped from a mental asylum. He was last seen in this area. He wears a hooded cloak and kills people with a knife. He's been nicknamed the Hooded Horror. I felt a chill run down my spine. How could I forget that? I had seen the report too, but I didn't think it was relevant. I thought we were safe in the cabin. I was wrong. We heard the door being smashed open. We heard footsteps coming closer. We heard a voice saying, Hello, my friends. I've been looking for you. We ran to the closet and locked ourselves in. We hoped he wouldn't find us. We hoped the others were okay. We hoped someone would come to save us. But no one did. We rented a cabin on the hill for a weekend getaway. It looked cozy and rustic in the pictures. But when we arrived, we realized it was more like a rundown shack. The windows were boarded up, the door was barely hanging on its hinges, and the roof was leaking. But we decided to make the best of it and unpacked our bags. The first night, we heard strange noises outside. It sounded like someone or something was scratching at the walls, trying to get in. We tried to ignore it and hoped it was just a raccoon or a stray dog but the noises got louder and more frantic, and we started to feel uneasy. 
We grabbed a flashlight and a kitchen knife and went to check the door. It was still locked, but we saw claw marks on the wood. We wondered what kind of animal could do that. The second night, we heard footsteps on the roof. It sounded like someone was walking back and forth, stomping and thumping. We looked out the window, but we couldn't see anything in the dark. We thought maybe it was a prankster or a squatter, but we didn't want to confront them. We hoped they would go away and leave us alone. But the footsteps got louder and more erratic, and we started to feel scared. We grabbed a baseball bat and a frying pan and went to check the door. It was still locked, but we saw blood stains on the floor. We wondered what kind of person could do that. The third night, we heard voices in the basement. It sounded like someone was whispering and laughing, saying things we couldn't understand. We tried to convince ourselves that it was just our imagination, but we knew it was real. We thought maybe it was a cult or a gang, but we didn't want to find out. We hoped they would stay in the basement and leave us alone. But the voices got louder and more sinister, and we started to feel terrified. We grabbed a shotgun and a pistol and went to check the door. It was still locked, but we saw a note on the knob. It said, We've been waiting for you. Come join us in the basement. We wondered what kind of horror awaited us there. We decided to escape. We broke the window and ran to our car. But it was too late. They were already outside, surrounding us. They looked like humans, but they were not. They had pale skin, black eyes, and sharp teeth. They smiled and said, Welcome to the cabin on the hill. You're our guests for eternity. We screamed and shot at them, but it was useless. They grabbed us and dragged us to the basement. We never saw the light of day again. When I was young I always wanted to spend a weekend in a cabin in the woods, away from the noise and stress of the city. I found a cheap rental online and booked it without much research. It looked cozy and rustic in the pictures, and the reviews were mostly positive. I packed my bags and drove there on a Friday afternoon, looking forward to some peace and quiet. The cabin was located in a remote area, surrounded by tall trees and a small lake. It was a bit smaller than I expected, but it had everything I needed, a bed, a fireplace, a kitchen, and a bathroom. I unloaded my car and settled in, feeling a wave of relaxation wash over me. I decided to make some dinner and then watch a movie on my laptop. I was halfway through my meal when I heard a loud knock on the door. I was startled, as I didn't expect anyone to be around. I got up and looked through the peephole, but I couldn't see anyone. I opened the door cautiously and saw a note taped to it. It read, Welcome to your nightmare. You have twenty-four hours to escape or you will die. There is no way out. There is no help. There is only me. Good luck. I felt a chill run down my spine as I read the note. I looked around, but I didn't see anyone or anything suspicious. I thought it was a sick joke, or maybe a prank by the previous renters. I tore the note off and threw it in the trash. I locked the door and went back to my dinner, trying to forget about it. I finished my meal and cleaned up the dishes. I checked my phone, but I had no signal. I shrugged and turned on my laptop, hoping to watch a movie and relax. But as soon as I opened it, I saw a message on the screen. I'm watching you. You can't hide. You can't run. You can't escape. You will die. I gasped and slammed the laptop shut. I felt a surge of fear and anger. Who was doing this? How did they get into my laptop? What did they want from me? I grabbed my phone and tried to call the police, but I still had no signal. I realized I was trapped in this cabin, with no way to contact anyone or get help. I decided to pack my bags and get out of there. I didn't care if it was dark or cold outside, I just wanted to leave. I grabbed my keys and ran to the door, but it was locked. I tried to open it, but it wouldn't budge. I looked for the key, 
but I couldn't find it. I searched the whole cabin, but it was nowhere to be seen. I realized someone had taken it and locked me in. I started to panic. I felt like I was in a horror movie, and I was the victim. I looked for another way out, but there was none. The windows were barred, the chimney was blocked, and the walls were solid. I was trapped in this cabin, with no way out. I heard a laugh from outside. It was a deep, sinister laugh that made my blood run cold. I looked through the peephole and saw a man standing in front of the cabin. He was wearing a black hooded cloak and a mask that covered his face. He held a large knife in his hand, and he was smiling wickedly. He spoke in a distorted voice and said, Hello, my friend. I'm glad you're enjoying your stay. I hope you like surprises, because I have a lot of them for you. You see, I'm a fan of horror movies, and I like to recreate them in real life. You are my latest star, and this is your final scene. You have 24 hours to escape, or you will die. But don't worry, I'll make it fun for you. I'll give you clues, and challenges, and puzzles, and traps. And if you manage to solve them all, you might just survive. But I doubt it. You're no hero. You're just a fool. And fools die. He laughed again, and then walked away. I heard him say, Let the game begin. I felt a wave of terror and despair. I realized this was not a joke, or a prank, or a mistake. This was real. This was happening. I was in a nightmare, and I had to find a way out. Or I would die. I looked around the cabin, and saw a note on the table. It read, Clue number one. The key to the door is hidden in the cabin. To find it, you have to solve a riddle. Here it is. I have a face and two hands, but no arms or legs. I can tell you the time, but I don't know your name. I can make you run, but I can't walk. What am I? I read the riddle and tried to think. It sounded familiar, but I couldn't remember the answer. I looked at the clock on the wall and saw it was 9 p.m. I had 24 hours to escape, or I would die. I had to hurry. I racked my brain, and then it hit me. The answer was a clock. A clock had a face and two hands, but no arms or legs. It could tell me the time, but it didn't know my name. It could make me run, but it couldn't walk. It was a clock. I ran to the clock and looked for the key. I saw a small hole in the back of it and reached inside. I felt something metal and pulled it out. It was the key to the door. I had solved the first clue. I felt a surge of hope. Maybe I could do this. Maybe I could escape. Maybe I could survive. I ran to the door and inserted the key. I turned it and heard a click. The door was unlocked. I opened it and stepped outside. But as soon as I did, I heard a loud bang. I looked down and saw a wire attached to the door. I followed it and saw a bomb under the porch. It had exploded and sent shrapnel flying everywhere. I felt a sharp pain in my chest and looked down. I saw blood gushing out of a wound. I had triggered a trap. I had failed. I fell to the ground and felt my life slipping away. I heard the man's voice in my ear saying, Game over. You lose. You die. I closed my eyes, and everything went black. 